which is let's talk about a non posting sales receipt okay so this is what I call a non posting sales receipt now the use case for this is very strange okay and I'm a CPA so I have to be very careful about how I frame this but I had a client that says Hector I want to create invoices in QuickBooks quote unquote I want to create invoices in QuickBooks that I need to print and give to my customers but I don't want them to post into my accounting system and I was like, wow, okay, that's an interesting one. Um, so I told them, well, what, what if we do an estimate? And they said, well, no, don't do an estimate because I'm currently using the estimates for, for actual real estimates, and I don't want to confuse them. So I said, well, let's think about this. Um, one thing we could do is create a non-posting sales receipt. And he's like, okay, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about that. What, what is that? So let me show you. Let me go to new here, and then I'm going to click on sales receipt. And then what I do, and again, this is a workaround. This is not like a feature or anything that you were missing. This is just a workaround that you should have, that you have to experiment with it enough to know how this works. I'm going to create a new account here. I'm going to create another asset account called non-posting sales receipt. Okay, and I'm creating it as a um, as another asset. That's yeah, that's totally fine. So non-posting sales receipt. And then what I do is I'm also going to create an item. I'm going to create a new item that hits the same account. So I'm going to have an item just called item, right? And then obviously uh, I'm, I'm going to call it NP, right? This is something that the QuickBooks user needs to be very aware of that this is a non, quote unquote, non posting item. So I'm going to send that one to the same non posting sales receipt account. That way, anytime I sell this item, it hits the same account where the payment hits. And again, it's the same principle as the job costing trick, which is basically coming in and out of the same account. And then I hit save and close, and then the, the client actually creates uh, like an invoice, right? So they'll go here and they'll select the customer, and then they always have to make sure they use that item, okay? So we just have to, I'm going to put it here several times. So that way, they're not really going to break down what product and service they're selling. They're just going to use that. And then in the description, they'll put the product and service they're selling. So I'm selling a car, and then I'm selling, let's say, a painting, and then I'm selling a house or whatever, whatever it happens to be. And then I come in here and I actually use the real prices, so that's not an issue, right? Um, the actual real prices are not an issue. And then when I when I print this out, it it looks like a like a real invoice, a real sales receipt. Um, from a document perspective, you know, it's it's got a document number. There's a there's a history behind it. Um, you know, it it shows no balance due because it assume assume that it's paid. That's the only sort of kind of deficiency behind it is because uh, sales receipts don't show any open balances. Um, and I really can't customize that yet. I can, can't take that out yet. But um, that's the only piece here. So I, I, I don't want to say that for clients that want to issue receipts and get paid in cash and not deposit in the bank, this is a good solution. <laughs> but because but, I'm a CPA and I'm supposed to talk about those sort of things. But this is, uh, this is how you could pull something like this off. So when I hit uh, save here, um, it doesn't affect my financial statements because when I go into my balance sheet, you're going to see all that transaction. Uh, I'm going to go to bank, <clears throat> bank, bank, uh, the balance sheet here, and then I'm going to go down to that non-posting sales receipt, and then when I click on that, you're going to see all the items that were sold and then all the, the payment that was reversed back to the same account. And again, same exact principle, right? You don't, you know, do, doesn't post anywhere in my account. I, I, can do, I can do tracking behind that and that sort of thing. Okay, and I have time to show you one more trick. Uh, which is uh, which is actually on the same is on the same wavelength as this, but it's 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 for a different use case. So I have a client that says, Hector, I want to use QuickBooks Online to track um, ticket numbers, and by ticket numbers they mean uh, service instances. So every time the client needs servicing, I need to have a history of it, but I really don't want it to be an invoice. I really don't want it to be anything other than that, and I want to be able to 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 do a special report on the history of the service thing that I've done for this client. So on the same exact world here, on the world of, of, um, of non-posting sales receipts, let me do an, that example here. So I'll click on sales receipt here. And then what I do is here where it says payment method, I create a couple of drop downs. So I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna start it with CRM, that way I know it has to do with customer relationship management. And I'm gonna call this one uh, service call. So I created that payment method there. And then I hit another drop down here, and then I'm going to call this one CRM, and I'm going to call it uh, Tech Issue or something like that. 
and then I'm going to create another one. And again, I started with, you can start it with whatever. I'm just doing it to make it easy for the user. And then I'm going to call this one warranty, right? So whatever I want to call it. Okay. So basically on the payment method, I use that to just sort of create, you know, filterable events. So let's say it's a warranty call and then I'm going to select my customers here, Amy Sanctuary. And then on their product and service, I just, the same exact case, right? I'll use the same item here. Uh, what was that? The item nonprofit. I, I mean, the non-posting. I I don't use description and I don't use quantity. I don't use any of this stuff. I just leave that blank there. Just this is the only tedious part that you have to remember to to pick that item or make sure that's a zero. And then here under the memo and the message display and the sales receipt, this is where I can put the information about it. So I want to put something like, um, you know, device was broken and we repaired it right? Wh whatever it is that I'm going to use and I'm going to select right that service call item there so I'm going to go ahead and, and save this one and um, I'm going to duplicate it just to kind of simplify the process here I'm going to duplicate it and do a different circumstance so a different customer altogether let's select that one and then this one was a let's say a warranty call and then down here I'm going to put here total replace of front vessel, okay, whatever whatever notes I'm putting there, and so I, I like to put it on the memo side too, just in case, um, and then I'm going to hit save here, and then how would this be work, be useful for a management report, so what I do is I go to the reports menu, and then I'm going to go into, um, actually I'm going to search the report called transaction list by date, okay, so it has to be a real customized report, I'm going to go to transaction list by date, and I'm going to click on customize, and then I'm going to select my transaction type. So my transaction type in this case is going to be just sales receipts. Again, we're using that sales receipt as the as the the the, the transaction type for this, and then um, and then I'm going to group this one by customer. I'm going to click on customer here, and then I'm going to click on run report. So now I have sort of a, a history, right, of of all the things I've done for these customers, and then I use the columns to add and display the information that I want to see. So in this case, uh, the, where are my notes? My, my notes are the, the, the useful things here, and the terms were also useful, useful as well. So I'm going to bring terms here, and the terms tells me the type of call that it was. And then I'm also going to put created by, because in typical CRM systems, we, we, we know who creates it. I'm going to get rid of transaction type because that's redundant. I'll get rid of posting because that's redundant. I'll get rid of name because I'm grouping it by name in this case, and I'll get rid of account, amount, to split. Again, we're only using this for um, for our internal sort of notes and, 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 and jobs and stuff like that. So I'm going to click on run report, and then basically that gives me my sort of my servicing status report. Again, we had the sales receipt from before. Let me delete that. That way we're not, we're not seeing that. This is the one that we've done with that other example. So now I can call this report my, whatever, my service tracker, right? So I can call this my service tracker. And then now I can use QuickBooks Online to track servicing for customers and I don't have to use another system. Again, if you have a sophisticated, if you have a sophisticated system that, that, that needs, for, you need to track field service and stuff like that, um, that, 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 you know, use another system, use a third party app or something like that. But this is just sort of a, a quick way to, to build a non-posting transaction report that I can use to just track, you know, the type of servicing that I'm doing.